Hey there. This is definitely a planned video and not a last minute attempt to get content out on time. I totally did not have a different video planned that didn't get edited in time. Anyway, on with the content. I think everyone has a list of clothes from movies or other media that they want to own someday. And since I'm sewing now, that list has gotten pretty big. A lot of the items I plan on sewing or my own designs are similar to things I've seen online, but today I'm gonna share with you 10 of the items I want to sew that come from movies. I can almost guarantee that there are more that I haven't even thought to write down, and I know there's more that I excluded for the sake of time. But for now, we'll just stick with these 10, shall we? Starting with Disney. Ariel's blue and black dress, kiss the girl dress, as it's oft called on the interwebs. I know, this one has been done by just about everyone, but I don't care. When I think back to being a kid and wanting a dress from a movie, this is honestly the only one that I can think of. I remember having the Ariel Barbie with this dress and I would run my fingers over the velvet top and the satin skirt and I would just daydream about having one that fit me. It's also a very practical dress in comparison to the other Disney princess dresses. Anyone who's ever had a complicated costume or cosplay can appreciate the simplicity of a dress like this. It's easily recognizable. There's no high maintenance prosthetics or makeup, and it's a little bit shorter, so I could wear it to the grocery store without needing a free hand to hold up the skirt. And I probably would. Number two is also from The Little Mermaid. It's Vanessa, which is Ursula's human form. And this was less of a childhood dream and more of a I dyed my hair black, who can I cosplay kind of idea. I couldn't even remember what Vanessa's dress looked like when I thought of this as an option, but there's a lot to like about it. Again, it's a pretty practical dress. It's less recognizable, but that's okay. It's purple, which is my second favorite color, and it's simple in design with just a little bit of flair. She also arrives wearing a cape with it. Add that and the necklace, and you are one beautiful badass villain. Number three, Belle's green dress. So Belle seems to have the most extensive wardrobe out of all the Disney princesses. I probably picked the green dress firstly because it's my favorite color, and secondly because you just don't see people with this one. It's typically her dress from the beginning or the iconic gold ball gown that people go for. As a retired hipster, I still have that lingering desire to be just a little bit different. And the green dress is also a simple design. But those sleeves, am I right? I've seen people jazz this up a little, but I'm kind of in love with how plain it is. So I'd probably just make mine to match the movie's dress as much as possible. Number five, Belle's cloak. The cloak she wears in the winter scene at the castle just screams Christmas to me. And I just want to have seasonal and holiday themed clothes for special occasions. I absolutely hate that they paired this with the pink dress though. Why not pair it with the green dress? That would ooze Christmas, but at least it would feel more coordinated than pink and red. Number five, the green dress from Pan's Labyrinth. Transitioning into non-Disney, we're gonna start with the green dress from Pan's Labyrinth. And it's an appropriate segue since it's actually just Alice's dress from Alice in Wonderland in green. I have wanted a dress in this style since I was a teenager after reading The Moor Child by Eloise McGraw and seeing a similar dress on the cover in red. In my opinion, it is the iconic cottagecore dress blending work and fashion by pairing an apron with those cute puffy sleeves we all love so much. It just so happens that the one in Pan's Labyrinth is my favorite shade of my favorite color. Number six, Arwen's dresses from Lord of the Rings. Like all of them, especially the light green one. 
except the one with red sleeves. Mostly the high collared gray one. Pretty sure this is like a battle fit? Possibly a coat? I don't know. Honestly, and I may lose a few friends here, I'm not really a fan of Lord of the Rings. <laughs> my boyfriend is, and I have agreed to rewatch the movies to see if my opinion has changed, but it just didn't hit me like other fantasy franchises have. Arwen isn't even my favorite female character, but I cannot resist the high fantasy elven fashion. Most of them are also very simple in design, and while not as practical as some of my other choices, they look very comfortable. For the most part, I have the skill to make this style of dress now, so this may happen sooner rather than later. We shall see. The gray one will probably have to wait though. Number seven, Eowyn's green dress. Ah, now Eowyn is my favorite female character. And yes, it is solely because she has the coolest line in the franchise. I am no man. My boyfriend hates that part. Not because he's misogynist or anything, he just hates when a plot is dependent on exploiting a linguistic-based loophole. Funny enough, that is exactly what I love about it. It shows that as a woman, and Mary as a hobbit, since he was there with the assist, weren't taken seriously as a threat. Since no living man could kill the Witch King, he figured he was invincible. Who else but a man would even be in the running? It's nitpicky in his opinion. I get it, but I wholeheartedly disagree. Anyway, even though it is Eowyn's badassery that makes me love her, it is the green dress that I love the most. It has those amazing sleeves that I can't resist, but the collar and the brocade underskirt are probably what really does it for me. It also helps that it's in my favorite color. I'm gonna have a lot of green. Number eight, the Bellatrix Lestrange dress. Cause I'm pretty sure she only wears one the whole series. Harry Potter, on the other hand, is a franchise I am entirely obsessed with. I know a lot of people have made this dress, but I have wanted it since I first saw it. In fact, Bellatrix's dress was the most I ever paid for a dress, and it was entirely disappointing. $275 I paid to have someone I found online make the dress. I sort of wish I still had it so I could show you just how bad it was. I chose this person solely based on price. This was probably 12 years ago, and the other estimates I received were around $800. You get what you pay for though. I didn't sew very much at the time, but I still knew that she had no clue what she was doing. She didn't take my measurements into consideration at all. The sleeves weren't even tapered. There was less seam allowance than I put into my clothes, and I don't put enough and she used white paint to mimic the design that just looked awful. She also had never used boning before and it still had the bend from the roll, which might have worked if she didn't have it flipped the opposite way. She also made the corset belt too large so I couldn't tighten it to help shape the boning and since I also had never worked with boning, I didn't know what could be done to reshape it. The answer, BT dubs, is to use a steam iron. Since the boning was now inside of pleather casing, it would have been a bad and or ineffective idea. Even if I did know to do that, I didn't say anything to her after I got it. <laughs> nothing, nothing good, nothing bad. Just never talked to her again. I was so upset, but I think she was probably just a kid and I should have known better than to trust such a big project to someone without knowing their skill level. She had cosplays on her website, but it turns out that they were all made utilizing pre-existing garments that she found at the thrift store, where she made mine from scratch. Anyway, this is still on my list of wants, as is Bellatrix's hooded cloak. I don't think I will make that one, but I would like to buy it. I did see one just like it at the Ren Fair one year, but the uh, $2,000 price tag was just slightly out of my price range. Number nine, Enola Holmes' red dress. 
Carolina Zabraska dragged this dress in her assessment of Enola Holmes' historical accuracy, but I love it. The brocade, the color, the silhouette, just everything about it, and I know I'm not alone on this one. It is such a beautiful dress, and I just need it. No real reason. And number 10. Snow White's Rogue Outfit from Mirror Mirror. Whenever people ask about an outfit from a movie or TV show that I want, there is one that screams to me, and it's this one. Like this movie or hate it, all of the costumes in this movie were fantastic. They did a wonderful job of immersing the viewer in a different world while still using the elements of historical dress that we've all come to expect in fairy tales. Even though I love the costumes, this is really the only one that I would wear. There's just so much to like about it. I loved, loved, loved that they gave her a practical fighting outfit. She still appears feminine, and that still benefits her when she's luring the victim into her trap. The sleeves aren't flowy enough to be in the way, but they're loose enough to allow free range of motion. The vest looks to be boned, and as Jill Barrop has confirmed, boning can provide a level of protection in combat. It also helps to hold the bodice fabric in place to keep it out of the way. And the pants! Yes, pants! Because why do we have people fighting in dresses? These pants are perfect because they look like a skirt, which goes back to her utilizing a feminine appearance while baiting, while also providing her with the advantages of pants. Overall, this just looks super comfortable and stylish, and I'd probably wear it everywhere all the time. This is absolutely my top choice for movie costume project, and provided I am able to continue YouTube long enough, you will see this one if you stick around. And you will see a lot of other fantastic aesthetic sewing content if you subscribe. I get so excited when I see a new subscriber, and I am so grateful for each and every one of you. Let me know in the comments what your dream outfit is, be it from a movie, TV show, comic book, video game, or whatever. And let me know what you think of my choices. Until next time, 